Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So today we will discuss the problem called as a autocorrelation. So first thing is what is autocorrelation? In the last lecture, we have discussed the concept called as a multicollinearity issue. So multicollinearity is a I means it is a problem where there is the existence of linear relationship among the regressors, but here we have to discuss in same way, but the structure is a little bit different. So, let me highlight what is exactly the issue. Okay. So, for a particular model say uh, you know a regression model with a multivariate framework, we write like this summation beta i x i i equal to 1 to n plus beta 0 plus u. So, obviously, there is a u i is here and this is a y i is here. So, like so this is how the structure is all about all, all about then y is a dependent variables then x is independent variables is the intercept concept intercept component then this is slope coefficient slope coefficient. Okay. So, now uh, put it in another particular format. Uh, the structure can be written like this y i equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus beta 2 x 2 i plus continue plus beta k x k i. Okay. So, beta uh, beta uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i beta 2 x 2 i uh, plus beta k x i plus u. Okay. So, now you see here is here the model structure is g starts with you know i subscript here. So, i represents here sample size i equal to 1 to up to n all right. So, n number of observations are there. So, we have k number of independent variables. Okay. So, now when we discuss the concept of multicoordinate then we have to see what is the relationship between y x 1 x 2 or y x 1 x k or x 2 x 1 x k this is how we have to establish the relationship. In the similar fashion, we have to discuss a problem called as a multicollinearity issue. Okay. So, what is all about this multicollinearity? So, multicollinearity uh, is the prob uh, means you know sorry, we have to discuss the autocorrelation issue. The means it is slightly different from the multicollinearity issue. So, now the multicollinearity problem is the degree of association between various, uh, various uh, association between various independent variables, but you know. In the case of autocorrelation, it is the degree of association between uh, something called as a error terms. Because uh, you see, when we have a, a regression model, so there are three uh, three components all together: dependent variable component, independent variable component, and error component. So some of the interesting techniques are with respect to y and x. Some of the interesting techniques are with respect to x and y, and some of the interesting components are with the u of, uh, u itself. Okay. So now, uh, 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 in this particular autocorrelation problem, we have to discuss the issue of the u component only. So let me first uh, uh, highlight the uh, starting point of this, you know, uh, econometric modeling and how we have to, uh, you know, integrate with this autocorrelation problem. So now, the moment you will get the uh, 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 regression models, uh, 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 multivariate regression models, then ob obviously in the next step you have to go for, you can say. Uh, it is a, a estimation. So, now we have to see what is the estimation process here. So, estimation process is equal to y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head plus beta 1 head uh, beta 1 head x uh, 1 okay, x 1 i plus beta 2 head x 2 i plus continue beta k head x k i. So, obviously, you will be automatically removing these uh, structures. So, now the moment you will get like this, 
then obviously this particular st structures again with respect to y uh, i i equal to 1 to n so this is otherwise called as a cross sectional modeling okay cross sectional cross sectional multivariate econometric modeling okay so in the last class we have discussed this particular models and after that we have to see whether there is a multi coherency problem because it is a standard problem associated with the irrigation then ultimately uh, ultimately we have to see uh, whether there is any association between the independence variables okay so now in the same lines we have to discuss this called problem called as autocorrelation you remember one thing here autocorrelation is a time series problem okay multi it can be you can say cross sectional problem or it can be you can say time series problem but autocorrelation most of the cases or most of the situations it is a you know time series issue only so we have to set set here the time series pro, uh, component first then we have to integrate with the autocorrelation problem let us see here so uh, this is the cross sectional modeling so we have to we have to just you know integrate with the uh, uh, you can say the time series modeling so uh, so this is how we have to write so yi equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 i plus beta 2 x 2 i plus continue beta k x k i ok so plus u u i ok so this is called as a cross sectional econometric modeling ok econometric modeling so in the line same lines we have to write here y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 t plus beta 2 x 2 t plus beta k x k t plus u t ok so this is how when i will write the subscript t then it is it is one way of you know putting in the time series issue ok so that means it is it is an indication that we are handling the time series problem so now the major issue is here uh, uh, major issue is here whether the subscript is i and whether the subscript is t if it is t then it is called as a time series issue and if it is i then it is a cross sectional issue so now you know uh, both the models are looking like same but uh, here there is uh, the, the moment you will uh, uh, introduce the time series issue then one of the major problem under time series issue is the autocorrelation problem ok so now we have to see because in uh, in fact it is not a only a only way to put in only t so there is other way you can put like you know it may be t minus 1 t minus 2 t minus 3 like this so that means there is a question of lag introduction in the system so this is the simplest uh, simplest way of representing the time series model but there are lots of complexity in the time series uh, time series itself so we have to discuss little bit later but in the meantime you see here the term multi collinearity and term autocorrelation are more or less you know same dimensions here in the uh, multi collinearity we are observing degree of association between you can say regressors in the case of autocorrelation we are discussing the degree of association among the you know error terms so that means what is all this particular issue but you remember when you have whether you have this particular format or you this particular format then ultimately your target is y head you have to get the y head y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 beta 1 x 1 head plus beta 2 x 2 head plus continue beta k uh, beta k uh, sorry sorry beta 1 head beta uh, this is x 1 this is x 2 then beta k head x k ok then obviously there is no error terms so now you see here the moment you will get the estimated model then error term is automatically removed but you know we can get the error term so error term is nothing but uh, let us say uh, even if u t or you can call it e, e t no problem at all so e t equal to y minus y here so ultimately we can get the you know error component so that means initially we start with the y and x then ultimately we will get y head and you know uh, ut heads so let us say ut head this is error terms instead of et we can put it ut heads ok error term so this is uh, uh, you know error component so there are altogether four variables but our uh, our structure uh, uh, with respect to autocorrelation is that so we have to handle with the u2 component how ut is very active in this econometric model that is the agenda we have to discuss in the uh, autocorrelation issue a, 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 let me briefly highlight here so now 
uh, 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 just you make a issue here. So, I can write a model like this instead of writing like this a I can write y t equal to uh, y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x uh, 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 beta 1 same I can y t I can put y t also beta 1 y t minus 1 plus beta 2 y t minus 2 plus beta 3 y t minus 3 plus something something plus beta k y t minus k okay beta k t minus k plus u t okay so this is how i can write a model so this is a multivariate model and this is also multivariate models this is also multivariate this is purely cross sectional modeling this is time series modeling but it is not pure time series modeling this is again time series modeling and it is it is in fact called as a uh, pure time series modeling because time series modeling one of the interesting feature is the lag introductions the moment you will introduce the lag then obviously the uh, you know problem itself will be uh, very uh, interesting so now you see here so the way we have discussed here in the case of cross sectional modeling or you can say simple time series modeling we are much concerned about this uh, association okay these association these are called as a multicollinearity issue okay even if here also so the series is y t minus 1 y t minus 2 y t minus 3 is also multicollinearity issue but you know within the particular setup so i can write here you see here so i will put it in different dimension so now i will write here so let's say yt equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 uh, uh, beta 1 yt minus 1 plus beta 2 yt minus 2 plus beta k yt minus k okay plus ut okay so this is this is one type of you know uh, time series model with you know lag involvement okay so now the way you are, you are involving lag with a particular variable then obviously the lag can be applied also error terms so this is the lag model where error term is simply represented as a ut but it cannot be simply represented as a ut once you introduce lag with respect to yt so obviously i can write the model like this yt equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 yt minus 1 plus beta 2 y t minus 2 plus continue beta k y t minus k plus u 1 uh, u 1 uh, you can call it u t ok then u t minus 1 ok plus u t minus 2 ok plus it will continue plus u t minus say k ok. So, now this is one division and this is another division ok so this is first division and this is called as a second division then first division is means y t is a function of y t minus 1 y t minus 2 ok so y t minus k ok this is one division and another division is y t equal to function of uh, u t u t ok u t minus 1 u t minus 2 uh, continue like ut minus k ok so now if we integrate then we will get yt equal to function of yt minus 1 yt minus 2 so continue like this u ut minus 1 ut minus 2 continue so that means this is one series and this is another series so now the game is very interesting here so now uh, uh, our target is to regress this with this this with this this with this this with this again this ok so this is how we have to uh, you know uh, we have to fit the model so that means the moment uh, if you will put it in explicit form then obviously there should be some you know supporting component here so that means let us say it is a gamma 1 y t minus 1 gamma 2 y t minus 2 gamma uh, k y t minus k so that means in this particular size beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 up to beta k are the uh, you know supporting components to each and uh, each and every variable and in the case of uh, error terms alpha 1 alpha 2 up to alpha t uh, alpha uh, alpha t alpha t minus 2 sorry alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 2 alpha k is also another series of uh, uh, series of variables which can you know interact with the uh, error terms so that means uh, here there are two series one with respect to uh, direct variables and another with respect to error terms so now we we like to know uh, what is the association between these two, uh, uh, these variables and what is this association between these variables this particular structure is called as a multicollinearity problem and this particular structure is called as a autocorrelation problem so that means uh, 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 is if you really closely uh, make a look in this particular models then you will find uh, 
the structure of multicolent and the structure of autocorrelation is in a similar fashion. The only difference is it is with respect to direct variables and this is with respect to in autocorrelation it is with respect to error components. So, because, uh, but uh, you remember error is not initially with you. So, initially you, you start with a particular variable say y or x. Okay. So, means uh, you can start with the y x both together that is you can say uh, multivariate time series modeling, but when we will go for univariate time series modeling. So, within the univariate uh, uh, within a particular variables we can create also multi multivariate model. So, that means, uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, integrate y u t with u t minus 1 or y t with y t minus 1 like this. So, this is how the complexity will be start. Okay. So, that means, we, you add one after another leg then obviously, you will get a model a complicated model and that is called as a multivariate model. But you remember uh, uh, in the time series uh, uh, that is very interesting features, but in the same times the moment you will introduce one after another uh, lag then you know model will be tends to multivariate, but in the same times uh, there is a lots of problems will be in front of you. First thing is if you will introduce lag one after another then obviously, you are going to lose the sample size because uh, in the very beginning I have mentioned when will we will fit a model let us say the model is y t y t minus 1 y t minus 2 then obviously, so you need a consistent sample size. Okay. So, that means for y t so there should be 10 numbers y t minus 1 there should be 10 and y t minus 2 it should be you can say 10. So, like this okay. I will give give you a little bit indication how is all uh, exactly structure. So, let us say y t here. So, y t y t here is the sample is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 like this. Okay. So, now this is y t. So, now uh, this y t minus 1. So, for each sample sample observation. So, then obviously, I will say number 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 like this way. So, this is y t. Okay. So, now I will create y t minus 1, y t minus 1, y t minus 2, y t minus 3. Let us say 3 variables extra variables I have to create within the system. So, y t minus 1. So, for this there is no such y t minus 1. So, that means for second then this series will start from here. This is for the for this ones this will be y t minus 1. Okay. So, this will be 10, then this will be 15, this will be 20, this will be 25, this will be 30. 5 then this will be 40. So, this is how it will be for y t minus 1 uh, t, t, t minus 2. So, the 10 will be come here only. Okay. So, this is will be come here 10, 15, uh, 25. So, it will coming here. So, y t minus 3. So, it will come here 10. So, that means, here we are got, getting uh, means losing 1 sample point, here we are losing 2 sample point, here we are losing 3 sample points. Okay. So, now ultimately when we will fix a uh, fix up a model then you have to take a uniform sample. So, it is not a uniform sample rather this particular structure has a uniform sample. So, that means, so once you add one after another, so you are going to lose uh, uh, your uh, sample size. So, obviously, you must uh, you must uh, very careful about that. In fact, there is a standard tricks or techniques uh, to decide what should be your lag length, but one of the condition of time series modeling that your sample size should be exclusively very high. In the cross sectional modeling with little sample you can do some uh, work, but you know in the time series modeling. So, if we will start with creating multivariate models within a particular variable then obviously your sample size is a, uh, then that means the sample size should be exclusively very high. If it is you know very low level then obviously you cannot fit time series modeling even you fit it may it may not give the consistent result. So, this is how the entire structure uh, means beginning of this particular term autocorrelations. Okay. So, now I will give you a little bit hint what is all about this autocorrelation problem. So, now we have written here y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x a, a, x 1 t plus beta 2 x 2 t plus co continue beta k x k t plus u t. Okay. In the meantime, we are not introducing the lag. Okay. So, th there is a lag model is usually called as a volatility modeling. So, we will discuss uh, uh, sometimes later because we have a specific uh, lecture for that. So, in the meantime, I, I will take a simple model and you know use the subscript t. So, t means time time series. So, uh, the data will be available with respect to uh, time rather uh, I means uh, instead of you know uh, any cross sectional units. 
So, now once you have this type of model, so then our agenda is here to discuss the multicollinearity issue, uh, sorry autocorrelation issue. So, now when there is autocorrelation issue, then obviously uh, we, we will not bother about this particular independent setup. So, that means this particular setup will be remain handicapped. Of course, we, we in the in between we can use this one for this you know autocorrelation ch uh, checking or something else. Something else. Uh, but if you directly involve with this particular uh, structure, then it is called as a multicollinearity. So, that means if you if you are playing game with only x regressors x 1 to x 1 2 to x 2 to t and x k t, then obviously this particular structure is a multicollinearity issue. What you know? Uh, we will uh, uh, our game will be very interesting if we will uh, you know integrate to uh, y2 with the error terms ok. So, the, because the error term impact is much uh, uh, means uh, much uh, influential component uh, with respect to this particular model. So, now you see here. So, we have two different you know setup. So, first setup is uh, that uh, we have discussed this particular multicollinearity. The multicollinearity starting point is that you should have a multivariate models where number of regressors must be substantially immerse or somewhat very high. So, that means a number of regression at least uh, uh, you should have two. If it is two, reg two, two regressor, then obviously there is a question of multicollinearity detection or you can say uh, a multicollinearity uh, you know. Uh, uh, means you have to play with lots of multicollinearity problems, but if you increase you one after another x, then obviously the game will be more interesting. But you know, uh, if this the way we are discussing with multicollinearity by putting two at a time, three at a time, four at a time, then obviously the complexity of multicollinearity will start increasing. So similarly, in the case of ut, so you start with ut, then you create ut minus one, you create ut minus two, and again ut up to ut minus k. Then we, you, within that particular system, you are creating you know additional uh, system. So that additional system should be uh, you know perfectly okay or perfectly consistent. If not, then there will be autocorrelation problem. Okay. So now this is the general framework of time series modeling. But <coughs> before you means before we proceed to this particular autocorrelation problem, so I like to highlight two things here. First thing is uh, we have discussed multicollinearity in the similar line of autocorrelation because uh, technical it means inside story is more or less same. More or less same means we are uh, because here uh, y t is one hand and is a function of uh, you know independent variable and error terms and this side is a dependent variable, this is dependent variable. So, that means if you integrate so it is a dependent variable as a function of independent variable and error terms. Okay. So, now if there is a uh, within the independent variable, if there is a any such modeling, then it is called as a multicollinearity issue. And within the error term, if such modeling, then it is called as a autocorrelation problem. This is called as a autocorrelation problem, and this is called as a multicollinearity problem. But uh, you know, multicollinearity issue we have already discussed. Okay, so now we will see what is this autocorrelation issue. From this particular structures, you must be very careful. Uh, second thing, uh, second thing is that. Uh, Autocorrelation can be bivariate problem, can be multivariate problem. Means if you have a function model say y t is simply function of x t only, then there may be chance of multi uh, you know autocorrelation, but there is no chance of multicollinearity. So that means uh, what we can conclude multicollinearity is always we can assume that it is a multivariate problem. Uh, but in the case of there is no question of in fact assumptions, it is by default multicollinearity is always a multivariate problem. But in the case of uh, uh, autocorrelation, it can be bivariate, it can be multivariate. So, now we have to see in fact if it is a bivariate, the system is very simple one, but if it is a multivariate model, then system will be little bit complex one. In fact, it is not too much complex because the entire setup will be same way. Uh, ultimately, you have uh, y t as a function of several variables and u t, then you have to uh, you know integrate properly to get the u t component only. Once u t component will be, you will receive, then uh, the game plan will be completely different, but uh, we have to do lots of g interesting games with respect to only error term keeping you know y t x t remain constant. But ultimately you have to first use y t UT and x t to get the u t. So, once you will have the u t then the game will be again more interesting. So, that means here the main agenda is to find out the error term. So, the moment you will get the error term, then obviously there will be 
a issue of autocorrelation. Okay. So, now uh, since we have already mentioned autocorrelation can be bivariate problem can be you can say a multivariate problem. So, it is better it is better we will discuss this particular problem with respect to bivariate setup because it will give you little of little bit simplicity. Okay. So, let us say uh, we start with this. So, we will reduce our model to y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 t. Okay. So, let us assume this is plus u t. So, for you can say for k equal to 2, k is equal to number of variables in the system. So, okay, k equal to number of variables in the system, t represents number of sample points, okay, time periods. So, k equal to 2 means here y t and x t, these are the two variables in the system. So, we are introducing error term, then obviously, the uh, all together this system has three components. So, now if we if we are uh, you know reducing this model to this model, then we can simply write y t equal to beta 0, beta 0 plus beta 1 x t plus u t, because uh, since it is only 1 x, then there is no point of introducing x 1 t. If there is a multiple x, then uh, of, of course, you have to write x 1 t, x 2 t, x 3 t, because there is a such, uh, there is a difference among them. But once you have one variable, then it is better you to put y t equal, y t equal to beta 0 plus beta uh, in fact it is beta 1. So, beta 1 x t plus u t. Okay. So, now the autocorrelation starting point is this one. So, we will discuss this autocorrelation with respect to autocorrelation problem with respect to with respect to bivariate setup, okay, bivariate models, bivariate econometric modeling. So, then it can be also generalized in the case of you can say multivariate modeling. So, in the bivariate setup, how is this shape of autocorrelation? Let us start with that simple equation. So, y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x t plus u t. Okay. So, that we will not going to explain ag once again because y t is as usual dependent variable, x t is independent variable and u t is the error terms okay, with respect to times. So, now uh, uh, what is our main agenda? Main agenda is to have the estimators. Okay. So, that means uh, we like to have uh, y t head, uh, y t head is equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x t, okay, beta 1 head x t. So, error term will be removed automatically. So, now before going to this particular estimation model, so I like to highlight something about the u t, but you remember one thing. So, when there is a uh, you know multiple uh, sorry multivariate models like this okay, uh, like this this multiple entry models. So, the, this is this will be it is better to put this one. Okay. So, the, uh, if you put like this model then obviously, you have y head equal to beta 0 head beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2 plus beta k head x k. Okay. So, now once you have this type of models, so what you have to do? So, uh, we immediately have the u t component. So, once you have u t component then obviously, you have to proceed for its uh, modeling. So, now, uh, uh, so once you have u t, so you will expand uh, uh, expand also with respect to uh, with re, means the way we expand with respect to y, y t and x t. So, let us see here. So, now the basic start starting point of this you know model is y t equal to beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 1 x t plus u t. So, obviously, the estimated estimated model will be y head t beta 0 t beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x t. Okay. But you remember to get equation 2 from equation 1 we usually apply OLS technique, but uh, remember OLS technique is based on certain assumptions and one of such assumption is covariance of covariance of u i u j is equal to 0 for i not equal to j and covariance of u i u j equal to sigma squares provided i equal to j. This is covariance and obviously, by default this is if i equal to j, then it is called as a variance of u, okay, variance of u equal to sigma square. But when we will go for time series modeling, pure time series modeling, then it may be covariance between u t, u t minus 1 or u t, u t minus 2 like this. So, this is how the uh, you know uh, uh, problem of autocorrelation can be uh, you know analyzed. So, that means, 
the standard assumption of OLS technique is that uh, there should not be any linear relationship among the error terms. Okay. If there is a linear relationship among the error terms, then obviously that will be lead to autocorrelation. So, now we, we come to know what is autocorrelation. Autocorrelation is the problem of having linear relationship among the error terms, okay. like you know multicollinearity. What is the question of multicollinearity? Multicollinearity is having the linear relationship among the regressors. So, now here we are discussing what is the linear relationship, means you not what is, is there any linear relationship among the error terms. If it is so, then you know uh, the model by itself cannot be considered as the best. Okay. So, until unless you uh, solve this autocorrelation problem, but you know like multicollinearity, it cannot be removed completely, autocorrelation also cannot be removed completely. There is some range if autocorrelation will lie on that particular range, then the model can be considered as the best model. So, uh, still some components has to be satisfied, but in the meantime, if it is not going beyond that range, then you have to redesign or reformulate the model or re-estimate the model till you get the best fitted model. So, right? so this is how the starting point of uh, autocorrelations. Okay? So, now I will little bit highlight the, uh, uh, you know, the way we will design the autocorrelation problem the structure is that you see here y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x t plus u t. Okay. Since we are uh, here you know uh, here all together we have y t uh, u t then we have x t then you have u t. Okay. So, there are three variable all together. So, u t of, of course, you will, will receive after having the estimated model the difference between uh, you know y t minus uh, y, uh, y head will give you the u t heads okay that is error component so now once you have this particular models but uh, we are not going to introduce lag directly here with the y t or you don't like to introduce x lag with respect to x t so we are very much interested here to introduce lag with respect to u t so if you will say y t equal to beta 0 beta 1 x t plus u t so then deviation de definitely there may be some functional form of ut so ut where ut equal to function of ut minus 1 so that means so uh, means you see sometimes what happens uh, when you are doing some process or work then there will be some mistakes so the mistake if you will call it is errors okay so that means you know you are doing the activity continuously with respect to times so now, uh, let us say this is one time period, this is another time period, this is another time period. So now here you are, uh, you, you, when you are in the current time period, then you have to see how much mistakes you are doing. Okay. So now, uh, in the second time periods, then again you have to see how much uh, error terms, uh, error you are committing. So that means there is enough chance that your present means your present level of error term error may be depending upon the past error term. For instance, you take it theoretically. In theoretically, uh, just like you know, it is called as a failure is the pillar of success. Uh, so, you know, uh, when you say the statement failure is the pillar of the success, the term failure itself is the past indications. Okay? So, if something failed means it is in, in fact, it is a gone. So, that means, once it failed means it is you know lack component which is, which is otherwise in statistic it is called as a error component. Okay. So, now uh, so failure is the pillar of success that means we are uh, uh, what is mean of failure and success that means something between you know plus minus for instance you see let us take case of you know plus uh, uh, profit and loss you, you can say profit and loss just like you know win and loss we will take uh, example of profit and loss. So, how will you calculate profit and loss? Now, when the you know revenue greater than cost and when revenue less than cost. Okay. So, now loss is you say uh, revenue greater than uh, less than cost. So, so, that we, we can so that we can assume that in the you know failure. So, this is failure and this is the success. So, that, that means we are assuming that profit is a function of you know failure it means your success is a function of failure. So, if you say uh, failure is the pillar of success that means success is a function of failures okay so this is the success of failure that means this is past event and this is the current event okay so similarly so uh, uh, the success may be at the highest level at the lowest level like this so obviously we are assuming that 
So, when will you do the war continuously one after another one after another then obviously, a, 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 a your committing of error will be going down. So, this is our observation or it may be a, I think sometimes it is by a default you will get a, some kind of uh, less correct uh, errors For, because uh, once you practice one after another time uh, continuously then obviously the error will be a, you know uh, will be tends to 0 ultimately it cannot be exactly equal to 0 but it will be close to 0 but initially the error may be very high suppose you beginning you have zero knowledge of statistics so i ask you to enter few data okay so then obviously you make lots of mistakes but you know i will again ask you to type the data another day again i will ask the uh, data to type the same data in another day then obviously i will check how much error you are committing mistake in the first and second and third and fourth end. you know uh, if you take uh, 100 samples like this way then in most of the cases the error will be in a decreasing trend so that means uh, it is the learning or it is the failure which you can say make you success or you can say error stands to zero so now so that means theoretically there is a linkage every time so that means if something is present then there is some connection to failure so now the moment you will say ut this is the failure or error term so that uh, error term is because of the past failure only so past you make some mistake that's why there is error terms for instance why there is a failure or why there is a loss so because revenue is not greater than to cost here so that is why loss so now we will turn to profit so now when we will turn to profit shape then you know profit as a function of not only revenue and cost it it will be it will be another function may cause may be cancel loss factors failures okay so that means i will call it in the profit case it's a profit is a function of revenue and cost and in addition to that i can say that the lessons you learn from the failures okay lessons lessons uh, from the failures okay mistakes okay failure lessons from the failure it may be another variables which can turn you to go for profit levels okay or which you would, uh, which you make or make an um, you can say uh, which you make an attempt uh, you can say to go to the success uh, levels so that is how the you know autocorrelation coming into the picture so that means when we will fit a models uh, y t equal to beta 0 beta 1 x t plus uh, u uh, ut then obviously in our autocorrelation problem uh, it means to discuss autocorrelation problems we hypothetical assume that this error terms ut is not at all independent variable so there is some connection with its past observations or past uh, past uh, yes past sample points if that is the case then we have to check it so we, uh, that means here our idea is that whether this error term is completely independent or you know completely dependent that means if completely independent then there is no other errors okay so that means we will create artificial error then we will find or we will justify that there is no significant association between the two if there is a significant association between the two then there is a problem so if there is no such significant association then obviously there is no such problem so the problem will be always there when there is a significant association between all these error terms so that is how the uh, structure is all about so how do we write for that so that is uh, in the simple way we will write like this y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x t plus u t okay so where where ut is function of you can say rho ut minus 1 plus vt okay so i will i will write like this way so that means we start with a linear model so y t equal to beta 0 beta 1 x t plus u t so now y t x t we are assuming that there is no y t is not depend on other variable and x t is not depends upon other variable that means when we will set y as a function of x and u so then obviously uh, uh, we, we are assuming that y x u are completely independent so that means only three variables which we can integrate properly okay so that means we like to know what is the influence of x and what is the influence of y on u uh, on y okay so that is our objective view, what we have discussed earlier so, right so now here uh, when we really think about uh, lag modeling particularly then obviously so i will i will put it here yt xt then ut okay so for simplicity 
So, now when you put y t x t u t, so there is the problem is not only to find out whether there is an association between y t x t y t u t or y x t u t. So, that is the case which we, we have we have to discuss before coming to the autocorrelation that is the case ok. So, now in the auto that means if the if that is the case then uh, uh, there is no such autocorrelation problem because we are assuming that they are completely independent, but let us assume that they are not completely independent that means y t may be depend upon other uh, its past uh, item. So, that means well, that if the problem will be more complicated if y t is a function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 ok or continue like this and x t as a function of x t minus 1, x t minus 2 and continue ok and u t is a function of u t minus 1, u uh, t minus 2 and continue ok. So, that means, so we start with the y t as a function of x t and u t, but uh, in between we find y t is also function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2, y t minus k, x t as a function of x t minus 1, x t minus 2 up to x t minus k. Similarly, u t can be function of u t minus 1, u t minus 2, u t minus k ok. For simplicity, we can write simply u t is a function of u t minus 1 ok. So, obviously, u t minus 1 as a function of u t minus 2. Similarly, u t minus 2 is a function of u t minus 3. So, that means, if you integrate all these totals, then u t has a function of u t minus 1, u t minus 2, u t minus 3, u t minus 4 like this ok. So, now, so, that is the case where we have to look uh, means we have to very carefully uh, consider. So, that means, uh, here y can be expanded with respect to uh, means if we apply lag, then x can be expanded if you introduce lag and u t can expand uh, if you again introduce lag. So, that means, we, but here our discussion is to uh, talk about the autocorrelation. Now, when there is a question of autocorrelation that times we have no serious business about y lag and x lag, but we have very serious business with respect to u lag that is error term. So, that means u t as a function of uh, u t uh, is a, 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 a function of u t minus 1, but generally u t lie between minus 1 to plus 1. So, okay. so it is minus 1 to plus 1. So, like you know we have discussed correlation coefficient correlation coefficient is the degree of association between two different variables say x and y two different variables x is one variable y is another variable, but uh, it, uh, you know there is some uh, you know correlation between x t into x t minus 1 like this you know when there is x t and when we are y t then when will be uh, relate then that term is called as a correlation ok. So, now with x t we can have x t minus 1 we can have y t minus 1 we have x t minus 2, we have y t minus 2 ok. So, now there may be correlation between these two, then there may be correlation between the two, this may be correlation, this may be correlation, this may be correlation, this may be correlation ok. This is how the entire structure is all about, but you know when we discuss this with this, then it is econometrically in a positive side ok. So, that means, if there is a any association between two different variables, there is such meaningful interpretation with respect to econometric modeling. It is as such a positive instrument, ok. But now, if we correlate x t with x t minus 1, x t with x t minus 2, it is a negative uh, 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 you know issue with respect to econometric modeling, because this particular structure is called as a not corre correlation, it is called as a collinearity or otherwise called as a multicollinearity this particular structure is called as a multicollinearity multicollinearity so that means you make a distinguish here so uh, how things are very uh, uh, you know integrated so we discuss correlation which is nothing but the degree of association between two variables okay not two variables two different variables so now there may be chance of degree of association between same variables okay x t x t minus 1 you know y t y t minus 1 or y t minus 1 y t minus 2 x t minus 1 x t minus 2 this is one type of you know problem. If if your objective is to track this type of problem, so this type of problem then it is called as a multicollinearity problem. So, now within the x t y t and if you apply uh, estimated equation then you will get u t. So, now u t has a u t minus 1, 
u t minus 2 like this. Okay. So, now you like to correlate like this, okay. you, you like to correlate like this, if you like to correlate like this, then if this correlation found something uh, value, so that means it is a degree of association, if the degree is uh, somewhat positive or negative, uh, then there is a problem. So, that means if the degree is 0, then there is no such correlation, that means uh, error term is a single variable that is u t only. So, there is no such other, that means the a component failure, uh, failure is the pillar of success will not uh, an issue here. But autocorrelation is just like the statement of failure is the pillar of success. That means every time the present will you know depend upon its past. Failure means here we indicate that failure is the because of you know error component only. Okay, this failure means fail means that is error. That is how you are failing. So, okay, so that is how the you know the term we have to integrate with the failure and success here we have to integrate the uh, relationship between u t y t minus 1 u t minus 2 this particular structure is called as a autocorrelation this particular structure is called as a autocorrelation problem okay so now uh, what is this autocorrelation issue so autocorrelation means it is the degree of association between not two different variables not same variable with its lag, rather it is same very uh, you know between two error terms with respect to lag. That is what the autocorrelation of all, all about. Autocorrelation means it is the existence of linear relationship among the error terms and that too with respect to lag issue only. So, that is what the autocorrelation all about. So, now once you get to know this autocorrelation then we have to discuss uh, so many issues with autocorrelation. Let me first highlight the entire structure of autocorrelation, how these error terms are well connected and how it can be very potential and very influential so far as a econometric modeling is concerned that to best fitness is concerned. Okay. So, now you see here so y t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x t plus u, u t. Okay. So, then what we have mentioned u t equal to rho u t minus 1 plus v t. Okay. So, this is how we have to see. So, now that means if we put it like this then we can call it u t is a function of u t minus 1. So, similarly there may be chance that u t minus 1 as a function of u t minus 2 because same way the failure is the pillar of success. So, when you are here then you are saying that failure is the pillar of success, then again when uh, you are here then you are assuming that the, uh, you are again the, uh, this is one type of success, it may be error but it may be at the lower level, this error this error will be different. So, this is this may be less error. So, if this is the less error then obviously, so then uh, it is you know uh, the error is again in the past. Okay. So, that error uh, that less will be because of you know this is uh, this knowledge only. So, that means every time there is a well connected. So, that means u t minus 1 is a function of u t minus 2. Similarly, u t minus 2 as a function of u t minus 3 and it will continue like this way. So, now if u t as a function of u t minus 1 then the explicit format is like this. Okay. So, let us assume that they are li linearly related to each other because we are uh, right now we are discussing the linear association between or among the you know, error terms. So, that is why we have established a linear relationship. So, that means y t as a, a y t influenced by y t minus 1. So, it is the y t minus 1 which influence u t. So, that means it is supported by another term called as error component v t. So, that means this error term uh, may not be exactly this u t may not be exactly depends upon its past it may be because of some other factor also. Okay. So, that 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 has to be taken care by another error term called as a v t, but v t is not the groups of u t, u t u t minus 1 u t minus 2 2 like u t minus k it is one group. Okay. So, that means the all these items will be derived from u t, but v t may not directly derive from u t. Okay. It is the committed error which can be also uh, you know influence on the present u t. So, now similarly we will write here u t equal u t minus 1 u t minus 1 is equal to rho u t minus 2 plus v t v t minus 1. So, this can be written. So, similarly uh, u t minus 2 it can be written as uh, rho u t minus
माइनस यू टी माइनस थ्री प्लस भि टी माइनस टू ओके सो सिमिलरली वी कैन राइट यू टी माइनस थ्री इज इक्वल टू रो यू टी माइनस यू टी माइनस फोर प्लस भि टी माइनस थ्री सो लाइक दिस इट विल कंटिन्यू इट विल कंटिन्यू सो नाउ अल्टीमेटली यू सी हियर्स सो यू टी इज ए फंक्शन ऑफ रो यू टी माइनस वन प्लस भि टी बट रो यू टी माइनस वन अगेन इज ए फंक्शन ऑफ यू टी माइनस टू सो दैट मीन्स यू टी माइनस वन कैन भी ट्रांसफर्ड टू दिस वे देन अगेन यू टी माइनस टू कैन भी पुट इट हियर देन अगेन यू टी थ्री माइनस कैन भी पुट इट हियर सो देन इफ यू पुट ऑल दिज आइटम सिक्वेंस देन यू नो यू विल गेट एनादर स्ट्रक्चर और एनादर इंटरेस्टिंग मॉडल्स ओके सो लेट सी व्हाट इज दैट इंटरेस्टिंग मॉडल सो नाउ व्हाट यू टू डू सो यू पुट यू टी यू टी इक्वल टू रो यू टी माइनस वन सो व्हाट इज यू टी माइनस वन यू टी माइनस वन इक्वल टू रो दिस इज रो ऑलरेडी सो रो यू टी माइनस टू प्लस भि टी माइनस वन ओके भि टी माइनस वन देन इट इज यू नो दिस यू टी माइनस वन आई हैव इंट्रोड्यूस हियर प्लस भि टी ओके सो नाउ यू सिंप्लीफाइ दिस वन इफ यू सिंप्लीफाइ देन दिस इज रॉ स्क्यर्स देन दिस इज यू टी यू टी माइनस टू ओके यू टी माइनस टू दिस इज भि टी माइनस वन ओके सो रॉ स्क्यर्स यू टी माइनस टू प्लस रो भि टी माइनस वन ओके रो भि टी माइनस वन ओके भि टी माइनस वन प्लस प्लस भि टी ओके प्लस भि टी प्लस भि टी ओके सो दिस इज हाउ दि स्ट्रक्चर ऑल अबाउट सो नाउ सिमिलरली व्हाट यू टू डू यू विल पुट टू यू टी यू टी माइनस टू इन दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन देन रॉ स्क्यर इन टू यू टी माइनस टू व्हाट इज यू टी माइनस थ्री देन दिस इज रो यू टी माइनस थ्री प्लस भि टी माइनस टू ओके प्लस रो भि टी माइनस वन प्लस भि टी ओके सो दिस इज हाउ दिग देन इफ यू सिंप्लीफाई यू विल गेट रो टू दि पावर थ्री यू टी माइनस थ्री प्लस रो स्क्स भि टी माइनस टू प्लस रो भि टी माइनस वन प्लस भि टी ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इट विल एक्सपांड ओके सो नाउ यू सी हियर्स सो दि वे यू विल एक्सपांड दिस वे देन अभियसली सिमिलरली इफ यू पुट हियर इन जेनरलाइज देन इट विल बी अल्टीमेटली कम इन टू रो टू दि पावर एस देन भि टी माइनस एस ओके सो दैट मीन्स अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली यू विल कम टू ए पॉइंट व्वेर देर इज नो यू टर्म सो अल्टीमेटली दि एंटायर यू टी विल डिपेन्ड्स अपन एना सीरीज अफ एरर टर्म्स इज कल एज ए भि टी ओके सो दैट मीन्स इट इज भि टी भि टी माइनस वन भि टी टू माइनस टू भि टी थ्री माइनस थ्री इट विल बी इनफ्लुएंसियल फैक्टर फर यू टी सो दिस इज हाउ इज वाज यू यू हेव अलरेडी अब्जर्व सो दैट मीन्स Uh, uh, so our model is here y t is equal to beta zero beta one x t plus u t and u t is equal to uh, rho u t minus one plus v t and similarly ultimately if we simplify u t equal to rho to the power s v t minus s okay rho to the power s v t minus t minus s okay so this is how the multicollinearity issue. So now we have to see the mean of error term should be exactly equal to zero. Then you know, variance of error term should be some constant component. So ultimately, this is how the you know uh, uh, autocorrelation is connected uh, to this econometric modeling. So now, how it is you know active and what are the uh, causes and how you have to detect and what are its solution, what its what are Uh, what is its feasibility all these details we have to discuss in the next lectures so for this uh, means for this time being uh, we have to stop here thank you very much have a nice day